Hello and welcome, it's Frances here. Thank you for coming back to my channel. And if this is your first time here, well then I bid thee welcome. I've spent the last week on and off sort of gathering thoughts from astrologers whose pages that I follow in relation to this new moon that's coming up next week. It's going to be the first new moon of the year. It's going to be in the sign of Capricorn, the sea goat. And normally new moons are planting the seeds that we wish to manifest for the coming full moon. However, there seems to be an increasing number of astrologers suggesting that the seeds that we wish to plant for this new moon Maybe we should be thinking about slightly longer term goals because we are actually going to be having a full moon in Capricorn in June. So basically what we plant now leading up to this new, new moon next week, we should be looking at it coming into fruition in June. So it's, that's quite interesting. There's also a push to think about more as to what we're manifesting or wishing to manifest, whether it's actually in alignment with the universe, with the cosmic will, with our higher self, our true self, our holy guardian angel. So we're moving more away from our sort of more personal earth-based materialistic wants and needs to something a little bit more higher level if you understand what I'm sort of getting at. It's also a good time to align our individual will with that of the universe. So just talking a little bit about Capricorn now, this information I've got from Pip Astrology. She's, uh, I think she's based in Sydney, so she's an Australian astrologer. And she says that the Capricorn is initiatory energy and it's often not easy to work with. It's all about creation and destruction. It's ruled by Saturn and of course we've had the Saturn-Jupiter alignment uh, earlier on, or in last year. And Saturn is the Lord of Karma. He's the Great Awakener who calls us to awaken to the deeper understanding of the self so we're getting again moving away from the physical needs and wants the mundane life to delving a little bit deeper into the soul capricorn operates with saturn as a portal to take us outside the 3d world which is which is one that we live in by causing a level of pain and tension all of which are prerequisites for higher levels of consciousness. So, as Pippa was explaining, we need to go through these soul upheavals, even in numerology. These are usually the one numbers, and particularly the S, which equates to the number one in numerology. And when I was being taught numerology many, many moons ago, the S was described as the soul shaker. So things would happen to really wake us up, move us away from the complacency and get us to really start assessing our life. And this is what she's talking about, moving through what we may consider darkness and pain, but through going through those emotions, those feelings, we learn to appreciate and experience things on a deeper level. And I mean, humans, we are emotional beings and it's not easy to or not wanted to feel these, this pain cycle or stress or tension to have our whole world fall apart around us. But sometimes we need to do that if we get too complacent. And it's through the restructuring and the rebuilding that we learn to appreciate things a little bit more. Now I'm sort of talking a little bit from personal experiences, having gone through a lot of emotional, physical, life-changing personal experiences over the last five years. So 
yes and it comes down to how we actually deal with these situations everybody's different and I suppose if you're looking at the tarot it's a bit like the tower card it's not necessarily a bad thing this upheaval it's like I said it sort of shifts our priorities our awareness from probably the more mundane to something that's more in alignment with our soul purpose. So it really depends on how we're sort of gauging or where we're at on a conscious level. When confronted with something that fundamentally changes us, we are able to gain a deeper understanding of life, going within to see what we are to learn from these experiences as opposed to blaming external forces. So we're sort of shifting our perspective on things. Capricorn rules the 10th house, which is career, work, achievements. It's this mystical sea goat. That is a combination between uh, the land, so that's the goat, and also the sea, so that's the mermaid's tail that it has. So it's about sort of blending the physical, the land, the goat, with the spiritual, the make-believe, the mystical, which is the, you know, the sea and the mermaid, or sort of dream consciousness as well. It's also moving away from, I suppose, the physical, mundane level of awards and accolations, and uh, where we get, um, we build our status, our identity, up by what other people perceive us at what we've actually worked hard to do moving on to a different higher level where all that identity that we've achieved on the mundane level really doesn't matter at all your status um, all the awards all the qualifications that you have obtained really when it comes to soul work if you're not walking on your soul path it means nothing and Pip actually did a really good, good analogy in that the Capricorn being a goat is often associated or seen climbing a mountain or there's usually the goat with the mountain behind it. So it's like we're trying to climb our way up to the top of the mountain with all these awards and accolades that we receive, or the status that we re receive from other people. And then somewhere along the line, along the way, Maybe there's a landslide or something happens and part of that mountain crumbles. And we then have to find a new path to continue up the mountain. And as we do, and I think the Buddha also said this as well, we begin to realize that it's not the destination. Or maybe there's no destination, there's no end result. What's important is the actual journey that we're on. And I think the Buddha put it somewhere, it's like there's many ways to climb the mountain. And it's the getting there. It's the path that you're walking and what you're actually doing on that path, which is the most important thing, not getting to the top. So the new moon in Capricorn relates to career for a lot of us, which I find a little bit ironic. Um, I work in a very ebbing and flowing environment and at the moment my contract that I thought I had to the end of the month ended really early so I'm sort of in between contracts in between worlds again and it's beginning to sort of trust that that the gods that the universe that my soul path will provide enough to cover the bills and all that sort of thing so it's this new moon in Capricorn is still reminding us what structures do we need to let go and also what structures do we need to call in being human we do like sort of organization and structure in our lives are the structures that we have in our lives beneficial to us are they congruent to where we are heading in or have they been adopted and adapted by other people or from previous situations? Do we need to let them go? Maybe we need to meditate or contemplate on where we want to head 
career-wise, work-wise, that sort of area. How does our, how do we feel about the career or work or vocation that we're in? If we're like myself in between work, where do you really want to go? Where does your heart sing? And just a reminder that the seeds that we'll be planting for the manifestation at this upcoming moon next week will be very important. Now, I actually brought one of my books with me this time. Um, here in Australia, the new moon will be on Wednesday, but it'll be around about, let's say, 3.30, I think, Adelaide time. Four o'clock in the afternoon, Sydney. And I like to do my uh, rituals evening before. Because I won't be, well, I might, might be around at three o'clock in the afternoon, 3.30 in the afternoon to do something. So I'll be doing it on the dark moon, which is that time just before the, the new moon. So it's still in Capricorn, still sort of working on that energy. Planting the seeds of manifestation. And as I said, something a little bit longer. Something to manifest at the full moon in June. So, what are you going to manifest? What seeds do you wish to plant? Something to think about. Thank you for watching, and if you if you would like to make a comment, please feel free to do so below. And I'll see you again. Blessings.